Chairman, I'll move the receipt placed on file those range of repairs. I'll second that. Motion to second. Any comments? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item three on agenda is to receive and place on file Webster County Auditor and Financial Statements for year ending June 30th, 2010. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item number three. I'll second that. Motion to second. Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item four on the agenda is approved, off, approved Class B beer permit application for Mineral City Speedway. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item four. Second. Not all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item five on the agenda is receive and place on file employment status change for Gary Gillespie from Class B equipment operator to Class C District 2 road foreman at the rate of $20.99 per hour, effective April 1st, 2010. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item number five. Second the motion, Mr. Chairman. The motion second. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Mike Paso, who's been the District 2 road foreman, and for the last eight years was uh, the foreman. Prior to that, he worked 34 years for the county. Uh, his position, he's resigning, and that was on the agenda at an earlier uh, time. And so uh, we have made a decision, and I'm recommending that Gary Gillespie be uh, hired to be the District 2 road foreman. And that'd be effective uh, tomorrow, April 1st. Uh, as a comment, uh, Mike Paso Chico will be having a reception tomorrow in the main floor of the conference room at from 2.30 to 4. And uh, I'll be here to get the notice on that. as well to do it again. Any comments? Matt, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item six on the agenda is approved approve request from Peninsula Gaming LLC to temporarily close and utilize a portion of South River Road between 230th and 235th Streets and a portion of 235th Street between Highway 169 and Madison Avenue from approximately 8 p.m. April 2nd, 2010 until April 6th, 2010 until approximately 2 o'clock p.m. April 7th, 2010 for a visit by the Iowa Gaming Commission to view the post casino site subject to filing an acceptable certificate of insurance for the purpose of a municipal gaming event. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve the request. I'll second that. I'll motion to second. Any comments? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 7 on the agenda is approved resolution to temporarily close Route P29 through traffic between Route D26 and U.S. Highway 20 for construction of new U.S. 20 and established detour routes. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item number seven. One second. Uh, motion second. Yeah, uh, a couple weeks ago I, I got a call from the DOT uh, who said that on April 5th, next Monday, they plan to, uh, they need to close Route P59 at where uh, new Highway 20 will cross and for several weeks. I believe it's going to be eight weeks, give or take, and which will allow them to grade and pay the portion across P29 and uh, complete that segment. So uh, in order, because close of P29 is numbered route by the code, anything route that's closed that's numbered for 40 hours needs to have a detour. We're going to set up a detour where whereby it heads into Calhoun County and goes to Canada and comes back. That seems to be the, the, the shortest, most direct route. And I got permission from Calhoun County, and so this will uh, document everything. And I recommend you approve this motion. Any comments? <coughs> Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8 on the agenda is to flip with Midas Council of Governors to discuss Iowa Medicaid. Well, thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you today. Uh, the reason that I'm here is because uh, we're going to be asking the Midas Board to make a decision at our next monthly board meeting, which happens to be tomorrow, uh, that had, could have an impact on the Webster County budget. And so we wanted to come and talk to you about that so that you have some awareness of what's going on. 
first a little bit of a background. Um, as you probably all know, Midas operates the guard bus system on behalf of the city of Fort Dodge. And in order to do that, we receive funding from a variety of sources, including the federal government, state government. We receive funding from the uh, uh, city of Fort Dodge, and we also receive some funding from the rider when they pay their share of the cost. Uh, some riders, however, are unable to pay their own share of the cost, and for whatever reason, some of medical, mental, physical, whatever it could be, income, and some of those go through the Department of Human Services and get their rights paid for through DHS. DHS has a contract with a company known as Iowa Medicaid Enterprises, also known as IME, and you'll hear me say IME throughout the rest of this presentation. Um, once IME uh, authorizes a person to ride on the dark bus system, they give us a notice of decision and usually they specify an amount of money or a number of trips that we can provide to them and they will pay for all over the course of a month usually. Uh, until, and we've been using this IME system now for a couple, a couple of years in Western County. Uh, before we used IME, those rides were usually paid for by either your CPCs funds, uh, through church groups, service organizations, family, friends, or, or whatever. Uh, the issue that I'm addressing today is the fact that recently IME has uh, announced that they're going to reduce the reimbursement rate for the trips that they provide by 2.5%. And that's because the governor's budget uh, is tied at the state level this year. And uh, so they had to reduce the funding, and that's how they chose to do it. Uh, when they made this announcement that they were going to reduce uh, the reimbursement rate by 2.5%, we went back to DHS and asked them that uh, instead of doing a cross the board per ride reduction, that they reduce the number of rides by 2.5%, they would save the same amount of money would still be paid for the service we were provided. They weren't interested in doing that. We went back to the Department of Transportation uh, and asked them to advocate to DHS on our behalf. The Department of Transportation did that. DHS said, no, we're not changing. We do not want the impact on the riders. So there is going to be, or there already is, in fact, a 2.5% reduction in the reimbursement rate that we get for the rides we provide that are paid for by IME. Uh, that's part of the bad news. Uh, more bad news is that it looks as if there will be additional cuts starting in July because the budget this year already still, as far as I know, haven't passed it. That's my opinion, they still haven't passed it. Uh, it looks like it could contain even further cuts in the future. Um, at Midas, we've always tried to keep our fares as close to the actual cost of the ride as possible. When they reduced us by 2.5%, we now find ourselves in a position where every time we provide a ride, we lose money for IME. We can't continue to do that. So we have to go to our board and ask them what it is that they would like to do to remedy the situation. We have developed three potential solutions. One is to just disenroll from the program, no longer accept IME reimbursement. One is to try to absorb a reduction and use cash reserves for as long as that works. Third is to continue to build IME and take whatever we get from IME and then come back to another funding source. In this case, we talked about from the county and that's going to make up the difference. Realizing this is not a good time for anybody to be approaching the county for 